so um, actually, I probably should put this one first. So I'm also the director of our Master of Engineering in Manufacturing program. So <clears throat> I want to talk about three points, and actually drilling down from the national level to the regional level to the MIT level. Talk about how you can collaborate with MIT in manufacturing in our educational endeavors, how to collaborate with MIT in our research endeavors, and I think the, the last point that I said that I was going to talk about are some of the connections and parallels between data analytics in manufacturing and data analytics in the healthcare environment. So the local ecosystem, um, in the, the framing here. So people in the manufacturing ecosystem. So in the Master of Engineering in Manufacturing program at MIT, it's a one-year professional degree in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. As we'll see, we move students in groups of three or four to companies um, for eight of the 12 months that the students are at MIT to address manufacturing, design, process innovation, uh, new product introduction challenges that are in the immediate line of fire of the company. <clears throat> within the MedRC, within the Medical Electronics Device Realization Center, we do industry-sponsored research, but we also require that visitors from the companies come to MIT and participate in the research with the investigators, with the students. So how does MIT in this way, you know, in, in this way, MIT is serving as a sort of a vital piece of the, of the local manufacturing ecosystem. So first, <clears throat> how to collaborate with MIT in the Master of Engineering and Manufacturing program. The MEng program is one year. Students come in starting in September, go from the fall through uh, the spring, and then also into the summer. They study design and manufacturing, manufacturing physics, manufacturing systems, management, global manufacturing, and they do a group project in a company. They go through it as a cohort, so this is not the master of science that many of you would typically think of as the research masters at MIT. It's a very focused in manufacturing group of students that go through studying these, these areas. So it's a non-research degree. It's comprehensive curriculum in design and manufacturing, taken as a cohort, emphasizing on using their engineering background introduce them to a systems perspective on design and manufacturing, and do these project-based, team-based curriculum in companies. So the strong industry collaboration here is we work with you, startup companies. There have been a number of companies where we have served as the, the manufacturing division for a number of years, actually, until they got their, their, their sea legs underneath them. So the group projects, three or four students, Identify a project that's of value to you. So during September and October, we'll work, work with you to understand what your challenges are to identify a seed concept for a project. Present that to the students in December. Let them mix and match and identify the projects that they would like to work on. So that in January, they start with you full time, work with you full time during January, part time during the spring semester, and then full time again during the summer. So eight months of the 12 months of the program, they're engaged either full or part time with the company. Example projects. Um, product and process design for a microfluidic device, implementation of Internet of Things for product um, and equipment in a factory, process development, uh, supply chain planning for new products, and new product introduction manufacturing uh, lines. Um, just some graphics from a number of the companies. Doctari, Canarca, Nanoterra, Variant Semiconductor, uh, Philips, to, to name a few. <clears throat> so both big companies and small companies. Okay. So... That, within the M Engine Manufacturing Program, we're putting students, groups of three to four students, in a company working with you at your facility. Within the MedRC, the Medical Electronics Device Realization Center, we're doing industry-sponsored research where we bring employees from the company to MIT, and we're identifying projects and challenges jointly between MIT, so the technologists, the company that gives the market and business perspective, and the local hospitals and clinicians and physicians. So have that strong interplay. The idea being that having that, that industry representative here at MIT keeps the PIs honest, gives that industry perspective to the student, and allows us to very rapidly um, develop prototypes to get into the laser pointer, to get technology, so to off-the-shelf technology as first pass ideas into the hands of clinicians as driven by what the company thinks the direction of the research should be to get to a product that's aligned with your product line, um, and very rapidly sort of iterate through um, design changes and have that industry perspective, clinical perspective, and technology perspective. Okay. So <clears throat> the application areas and some technology examples. 
So the big bullets, wearable devices, minimally invasive monitors. Uh, so wearable devices mean the Internet of Things for patients. Uh, point of care instruments, imaging, data communications, and pharma are examples of the big application areas. And the small bullets are example projects that are industry-sponsored projects that are happening at MIT and done in collaboration with local hospitals. A number of them have spun out already into companies, so startup companies, and some of the areas are being licensed by the big companies that have sponsored some of the research. So this is a uh, behind-the-ear physiological sensor that's now um, spun out into a, a startup company, and this is an a ultrasound imaging device that allows uh, non-sonographers, non-radiologists, <clears throat> to acquire a high-quality image, and this is being licensed by some of the big um, medical device companies. Okay, so first two points. Collaborate with MIT in our educational endeavor in the Master of Engineering and Manufacturing program. Collaborate with MIT in medical device realization, the Internet of Things for the medical space. Sponsor research and send employees of your companies to MIT to work with us. And then the last point was the thing that I said that I would talk about on the agenda, uh, the data analytics parallels. So big data, uh, information from big data, and the parallels between the healthcare environment and the manufacturing environment. <clears throat> so how I look at this, um, we have on one hand machines, products that fit within a factory, that fit within a supply chain. And we may add sensors and instrumentation to the machines, to the factory, to the supply chain. From those sensors, we'll get data, we'll analyze it, we'll distribute it, and we'll use it in some way. The framework of how you think about that, the sensors even, go down to the lowest level of sensors that you may develop. And this ties into um, the, the, our flexible hybrid electronics proposal. Two of the theme areas for this FHE center, the flexible hybrid electronics center, is how we make flexible hybrid electronics for the medical space and how we make flexible hybrid electronics for factory automation, the Internet of Things. So this conceptually is very much what we put forth in the, IMI, in the Innovation Manufacturing Institute proposal. So I'll change slides. The only thing that's going to change are these three, the text in these three boxes. So a patient, a hospital, a healthcare system. So the, those different scales of I can have sensors and instruments on the patient in the hospital and the healthcare system. And conceptually, many of the same sensors and many of the same analytics and many of the same ways of managing and looking at the data transcend both domains. Just a few examples if I have two minutes. Two? Okay. Um, so driving that forward just with two simple examples um, on a parallel between a manufacturing application and a healthcare application. So here we're um, over in the basement of building 35. We have a little manufacturing work cell to make microfluidic devices. So these are transparent little pieces of plastic with micron si size channels in there to do fluidics handling for any number of, of point of care uh, uh, analyses. Here we're looking at a, an inspection technology, which is a high-speed camera looking at the part from different angles, different orientations, looking through the part as a, treating it as a window. Um, the window itself is modifying the appearance of something on the other side of the part. And by analyzing it, we can generate very rapidly with a high-speed, this is a 50,000 frame per second camera, can generate a large area, so centimeter, a complete volume reconstruction of the microfluidic device that was just manufactured and identify whether it was manufactured the way that it needed to be. You know, if the features are the right size, right location. Same technology we've now repurposed to doing volume imaging for procedure control in the hospital, where uh, at the surgical suite, a doctor will pull out a, a biopsy sample, and we want to do a rapid volume reconstruction and determine whether the sample is sufficient to send to pathology so that it has sufficient um, Biomark or sort of optical marked uh, chemical in it that it can be analyzed for the presence or the lack of presence of cancer in the, in the, in the biopsy sample. Last example, um, on a manufacturing inspection, so this ties in again to the flexible hybrid electronics. Here we're uh, producing micron, submicron size features on a, on a roll to roll printing process. Um, we'll use some optics or some ultrasound to look at the features that are being printed on the web. And here we compare the features that we expect to the features that we observe. So there may be extra features, there may be missing features, so that we can compare this network of points, this constellation, and depending on the variation in the expected constellation and the actual constellation, 
we can estimate the deformation of the web and how it's being moved around so that we can register roll to roll, pass to pass, different printing layers. So that's being used. Same technology now being used, same algorithmic technology for looking at the constellation mapping of skin features. So here looking at skin health, we have the micro reliefs that are on the scale of uh, tens of microns to several microns and being able to understand that the, your local skin features are as unique as your fingerprints and looking at skin stability for uh, various skin conditions, whether it be skin cancer is, a, is an obvious one, but there are many other skin conditions where we want to be able to very robustly compare what skin looks like today from a week from today, from a month from today. And so to do that well, you need to be able to do this deformation, correction, and warping to compare the pattern of points similar to we, what we just saw for the flexible web printing to doing that thing for the same thing for the skin. Okay. So then in the end, what we're trying to do in a manufacturing environment or in the healthcare environment is get sensors, get instrumentation uh, away from the point where it's very expensive and material has been damaged or patients are very sick to getting sensors on the patient in the home to getting sensors on the equipment um, so that we can get, it, get information and get data where it's less expensive and I have no time left. And the three points, just to summarize, how to collaborate in the local ecosystem with MIT and education. Come to us with our, your manufacturing challenges and projects. Um, collaborate with us in the Internet of Things and the medical environment and just a few data points on sort of the parallels between big data, data analytics, sensors to information in the healthcare environment and the manufacturing environment. Thank you. <clears throat>